Hello! Two chapters today, and that would be St. Mungo's and Christmas in the Closed Ward. In which we get, of course, a more extensive look at the Wizarding World. Um, specifically their hospital, which we've heard briefly mentioned, um, but we're now actually getting expanded. So we've got Diagon Alley, we've got Hogwarts and Hogsmeade, uh, Platform 9 and 3 quarters, Ministry of Magic, and now we've got St. Mungo's. So we are getting a really clear definition that this world is an extensive one. It is not is severely limited. It has its own problems still, for example, floating children who have sprouted wings. Shoes that eat people's feet. Snakes that sneak into the ministry. No, what's, what's interesting with this set of chapters is on Harry's side of things, we're watching him just sort of collapse in on himself uh, with worry about what is actually going on. And then we get the other stories uh, to bring up last video back in. We're getting the other stories sort of colliding in on him. And within St. Mungo's as a chapter, we more get the image of the adults, and we get an expanded show of, of what they're going through. Because up to this point in time, we really sort of have been with the kids, and we want to know more about what's going on, and we want that communication there, and we want the kids involved, because they are already involved, so we want them fully involved. Except in this chapter, we're seeing what fully involved actually is, and it almost kills Arthur Weasley. And Molly's trying to run around. Dumbledore has to sneak the kids out from under Umbridge's nose. Um, we actually see that the adults themselves are struggling to keep things together, and they don't want to put that pressure on the kids. We're seeing Sirius, who basically has to fight down the twins and, and take some serious insults from them uh, as well because he's stuck in the house and everybody else is out there risking their lives. And this is interesting because we are getting some echoes of what we're going to see later on. We have some direct echoes, um, for example, Arthur talking about this criminal that's gotten off with muggle baiting. Uh, we're going to find out he's helping Umbridge. But we also have this very direct echo when the twins say to Sirius that, oh yeah, you could talk a big game, but it's not like you're out there risking your neck. And what this then echoes towards is Ron's accusation against Harry of... I'm putting my family in danger, and you're not because you don't have a family. We are getting this sense that the adults here are working to keep as much together as they can, but they have just as little control as, as the students do. It's the idea that you really have to fake this confidence because you're never going to have all the answers. There's always going to be questions, there's always going to be regrets, there's always going to be decisions, and you're never going to have enough information to guarantee that you make the right choice. And so, while we're seeing Harry go through that, we are also getting hints that these adults are going through it. For example, when Mr. Weasley tries stitches. He doesn't have enough information to say yes or no on that one. So he makes the decision. It's the wrong decision. We're going to see that with Dumbledore's army, and, and how that's going to fall apart. Sirius having to buckle down with these kids, but failing to do so with Crutcher, who Harry quite correctly pinpoints that when Sirius said out, Crutcher took that differently than Sirius meant it. 
and he took it as he could get out of the house. We're seeing that some adults are struggling to actually work positively in this environment, specifically Neville's grandmother, who you just sort of want to smack and say, like, maybe Neville has some confidence problems because you're constantly saying that he's not as good as his father. We're seeing Mr. and Mrs. Longbottom, though we really only see Mrs. Longbottom, um, and we see, of course, uh, Lockhart and the other people in the wards that things can go wrong, and they can go wrong permanently. And again, we're not seeing a whole lot of students or children. We've got the one child with the wings, but everybody else here that we're actually meeting seem to be adults. So we're seeing that they're, they're trying to hold things together just as much as, as these kids are, and failing as much as the kids are too. And then, of course, we have the expansion of the trio on the other end. So we got a good look at what some of these adults are dealing with. And then we actually get a look at some more kids that are not just the Golden Trio. A lot of Christmas in the Closed Ward, of course, is just Harry falling in on himself in a complete and total panic of, of what, he, what he could actually be capable of. And it scares him. And the interesting thing is, for the most part, it's not the Golden Trio, it's not Harry and Hermione, Ron and Hermione, that pull him out. It's actually Ginny who sits down and says, okay, screw you for thinking that none of us can relate. Because last time I checked, only other person that could say they were possessed by Voldemort, right frickin' here. Like, it is really Ginny who, who stands up for herself in that moment and says, you are not the only one who is going through this. So we get a moment of, of Ginny sort of consolidating as a bigger character and not this minor character, this shy character, this victim that we've seen. She is coming into her own and she is saying, look here, you're not going to pull what the adults are pulling and try and shut us out because that's stupid, and you're stupid for even trying it. Interestingly enough, we also get to see Neville, who's going to come in to his own, and we're starting to see that through this book. In that moment where, when his mother gives him the candy wrapper, he looks at the, the other four with a look of defiance that basically says, I dare you to say anything about my parents. And it's that moment that you can see the hints of the, the courage and bravery and competence that Neville can reach solidified in that moment of just, I will fight you on this. And in this moment, you know you're not going to win. So even in those moments where his grandmother's actually tearing him down, he has something he's willing to fight for, and he's willing to fight his friends to do it. And they know to, to back off. And in fact, Harry goes a step further because when the other kids say they didn't know, Harry explains and, and basically says, like, no, this, this is directly related to us. And he explains very directly that, of course, Dumbledore asked him not to say anything. But he he nails it down and he says, no, Neville has just as much at stake here as the rest of us do. And it's he's really able to say that because Ginny has pointed out to him, in her case, that that's true as well. It's Ginny going, hey, I've got just as much at stake here. And then Harry going, Neville does too. No, oh, look, it's not just the three of us. It's this moment of Harry learning that he needs to step out of himself or he is going to turn into the adults that he is despairing about because he's going to shut himself off and, and try and hold it all together himself and he's not going to be able to do that. He needs this group and this group in fact has to get bigger. 
the trio is not going to be able to handle this, even if they are the main sort of fighting force. They need more people. And we're seeing Neville and Ginny really come into their own, starting in this chapter, and they will continue to do so moving forward. And that's really cool. In the moment that Harry is at his lowest, we have the other students saying, okay, now we step up and we pull you with us. Because our strength is not when we're divided. Our strength is in numbers. So they know they can't leave Harry behind. But they know they've got to step up as well, and they can't let him do all their fighting. So, I'm excited. The adults are trying to hold things together, and uh, the kids are too. And right now they're a little separate, but we're going to start seeing that world set of worlds collide a lot more. And nobody's died yet! <sighs> Though we've seen one murder set up with that strange tentacly plant. It's the little things. Okay. I've got quite a bit to do today, so I'm going to let you go. I'm going to keep reading, and I hope you do too. See you next time.